His agile fingers float across the piano, delicately producing the mournful tune of a popular hymn. Ming, not his real name, was diagnosed with bipolar 2 and clinical depression some 20 years ago, conditions he developed at 18 years old after his grandmother died. In the years since, he's often returned to this song, Amazing Grace, for solace. He felt a um, sense of loss, a sense of uh, also um, alienation, and also like, like my world fell apart because she was my primary caregiver. And um, um, I, and really, I really loved her, yeah. But and I, I didn't know it was depression because I couldn't cry. My sisters were all willing, but I, I, I just couldn't. I, I mean, I, I, it was like, 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 like a hole that's been carved out from, from some, somewhere within. The life-changing event occurred just before Ming entered compulsory national service in Singapore. Once cheerful, effervescent, and driven. He gradually became sullen and withdrawn. It, it got to a point where I make plans, or I tell people uh, I don't feel like living, or I actually make wishes. Okay, I, I aim to live up to maybe forty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then that's it. Then I, I want to go. I mean, and I, I thought this is really normal. I mean, until I've talked to people and they re and I realized that almost everyone I knew was not depressed or. I and mean, then, whom I think is not depressed, wants to live like as long as they can and enjoy life. According to Tan Li Li, executive director of the Singapore Association for Mental Health, or SAMH, depression is often triggered by major or traumatic life events, such as a death, divorce, illness, or financial worries. Ms. Tan says it's important that family members look out for loved ones dealing with a drastic change. But there are subtle differences between being sad and being depressed. Feeling sad would be a, more of a passing phase. You, uh, sometimes you feel sad for a certain period of time, but usually you will bounce back a bit quicker. But if you say when you're depressed, uh, really in depression, it doesn't bounce back that easily. Yeah. There is this myth where people think that it's just that you are not strong, you are just unhappy and you will snap out of it. Clinical depression, that is always not the case. Yeah. Having an empathetic ear to listen to one's problems helps. Support networks can be found at home or in the community. For example, non-profit SAMH provides community care and rehabilitative services. Ming, however, found it tough to talk to friends and family. Many failed to understand his anguish or worse, trivialized it. It was also quite hurting when, when I tell someone that and, and he or she would just tell me, oh, uh, so whenever you have depressed, uh, maybe you can stay away or, or you c contact me when you are feeling better. Someone told me, oh, you are definitely not having depression. I went through worse than you. Or, or people would tell me things like, oh, you are too free. You can find more work and do something. While men are half as likely to suffer from depression than women, it's harder for them to accept that they have it. Social norms are often to blame for this denial. Men are expected to behave well manly and by admitting that you may be depressed, it's often seen as a sign of weakness. But physicians warn that if depressive disorders aren't acknowledged early, they may lead to a serious physical and psychological breakdown. With no release valve for negative thoughts and emotions, the pressure can reach dangerous levels. When men come to see us is when they are at a very desperate stage already because uh, there is this stereotyping that men it's a bit more stronger and uh, shouldn't uh, be feeling that way. I think it's very dangerous because a former church mate's brother had um, committed suicide and if he had maybe talked about this or he had been able to share more freely or he, if he had not believed I mean, in what the society has taught him to believe, then, then he, he, might not, he might still be alive today. Psychiatrist and SAMH Vice President Dr. Lee Cheng points to a worldwide trend that sees more depressed men kill themselves than women. They may not get treated, so the depressed mood become more severe. And when they become more severe, they tend to have a lot of negative thoughts and a lot of uh, blame, self-blame, self-guilt. And with that, the uh, condition worsen and the uh, suicidal ideation becomes stronger. The first step to tackling depression is to recognise the signs. 
Dr. Lee says men tend to present more physical and behavioral symptoms of depression, such as poor sleep and appetite, a lack of concentration, and lower energy levels. They're also more likely to develop substance abuse. They should recognize that without treatment, their impairment, they will be impairment to their social life, to their, at their work, in their relationship with others, and early treatment will always have a better prognosis. And I do encourage all men who have depression to seek help early. It's important for uh, them not to say things like, you can just get over it by itself, uh, it's part and parcel of life. This will discourage people who are suffering from depression, especially those who are silent sufferers, and uh, not having the initiative or the momentum to get help. The other way to get well is to acknowledge being ill. Ming took that bold step and was treated early with medication and psychotherapy. He also engages in art therapy at SAMH's Creative Hub. When not doing that, he acts, sings, dances and choreographs. But even when they seek help, men take longer than women to respond to counselling. Ms Tan explains that men are reluctant to reveal their vulnerabilities and are often embarrassed when they break down during therapy sessions. I think crying helps a lot because it's an avenue where you uh, release your tension and your emotions as well. For men, I think um, they are not very used to doing it, but I think it is an um, a outlet of expression as well. Youth are leading the charge to remove taboos around depression and other mental illnesses. One example is Mental Muscle, a student-led initiative by medical undergraduates from the National University of Singapore. The group aims to create awareness about mental health. Part of its strategy is to raise funds for SAMH. This year, they're attempting a 200-kilometer trail run in Nepal. The target is 18,000 US dollars. And why should people support their efforts? Maybe either your friend or your family member could be suffering from mental health problems and you won't know about it. So through this event, by raising awareness, by raising funds for SAMH and, uh, and making the public more aware of these, of these issues, uh, going forward, uh, people will be more open to sharing and talking about their own problems. 20 years may feel like an eternity for someone like Ming living with depression, but he remains optimistic. Ming finds strength in seeing how far he's come from being that awkward and anxious younger man. And while there's music to be played, brushstrokes to be laid, and arias to be conveyed, life stays hopeful.